Have you watched Inception where we have a dream within a dream within a dream and everything goes crazy? Well, that's recursion. But the fact that the recursion is a bit different is how we code it because we have to know as programmers how to get out because otherwise it's going to be crazy as Inception. So let's get started. So if you don't have the project already checked out, you could go to my GitHub, which is github.com slash SNIOS. And there you can click on this code button, copy this line here, and then you can just open terminal and type git clone and then paste this command. And then you should be able to clone this into your machine. Once you're done with that, make sure to open the project in VS Code or one of your favorite editors. And once you do that, you need to run yarn in the project root. Once you're done with that, just type yarn start and you should have this project started just like this. And you should be able to see this application that we are working with on localhost 8080, something like this. So we are actually working with this JS recursion folder. So once you have done yarn start, you can just click here and then this is the project that we're going to look at, but not right now. The example that we are going to follow for kind of understanding recursion in, is this one. Suppose that we have a data uh, which has a bunch of objects and each object has a fruit and all we need to do is find one little grape inside this whole array of objects. Now there are multiple ways to do that, but with the recursion, it's a bit different. So first we're going to talk about how we can calculate this without using recursion. So let's say if we have the same data here in which we have almost 11 items and here we have this guy here, which is the grape and we have to find the index of this particular element. One of the things that we could do is that we could say const and then we can say grape index and here we could use something like the find index method. So here we could say something like basket dot find index and here we get each element back. So we could do something like return element dot fruit equals this particular folk here, which is the grape. And once we do so, we could just quickly console.logout grape index. So if I go ahead and run and debug this with VS code and run it with the Node.js configuration, we should be able to see some log. So let's actually put some breakpoints, run and debug again. Here, you're going to see that we are going to call grape index. And before that, we are using the basket.find index. You can see that we have an array of 11 elements where this fruit is at the index 7. So here it's going to go inside each uh, of the items and then we'll try to find this using the condition. So here it goes with the first element, which is essentially an apple. And here it's trying to compare the apple dot fruit, which is an apple with grapes. So it's not going to work until we get the item. So it's going to go forward um, quite a lot of times until we get this particular element. So here on the left side, you can see that we have this local variable and we'll see when grape comes in. So now we, you can see that we have this fruit as grape. And now when it will compare this, it will essentially return back the index into this variable. So here the grape index right now is seven. So we actually got the right number of the index. Now this is one way of doing this. Another way is to use recursion and let's discuss how that works. So for instance, if you had to do this with a loop, what you would do is that you would do something like cons or not cons, but let grape index. And here you would say something like minus one. And then here you would do a for loop. So we would do something like this. We will say this is an I and the array name is basket. And here we have this element. So let's call it um, fruit object. And then we have to check if this fruit object is grape. So we could simply do something like if fruit object dot fruit equals. And if we check this with grape with something like this or oh, not here, but actually here. And then if that's the case, then we set the grape index to the I value which means that if it's exactly matching, then we take that index and then we assign this to grape index. And once that's done, we do not need to run the run through the loop or the rest of the loop. We just need to break here and then the grape index value can be seen here. So I'm going to save this, put a breakpoint here and show you how this works. So if I run in debug, you can see that here we are starting with the loop. So first of all, we're going to start with i equals to zero and we are going to basket.length, which is 11. So essentially it will go first time here the i should be zero in this point. And then if we go forward, the fruit object is the first fruit object where you can see here. And we already know so far that the index that the grape is at seven. So here I'm going to just put a breakpoint here. And then if I play, you see that it's going to continue working through that until the index is seven. So here 
if I watch this variable, which is I, you see that the I is four right now. And if I just keep on going, you see when the I becomes seven, that's where we go inside this loop because the fruit now is grape. And now if I go inside, the grape index is set to the value seven because the I is seven. And that's where we go out of this loop and then we got the grape index. Now that's the second method. The third method is creating that function. So here we're gonna say something like const grape index equals find grape. And here, as we discussed, we're gonna pass zero as the index. And here we're gonna say const find grape. And then this will essentially get an index. We could call it I, we could call it index, doesn't matter. Let's call it index. And here we're gonna do something uh, else here. Now, if I write the code for you right away, it should potentially look something like this. What we are going to check is exactly the same as the loop. But here we're going to say if basket index dot fruit equals this grape, then we return the value of index. Otherwise, we call the same function again, but with a new index. So that's where the recursion comes in. We are calling the same function from within the function. And that's the inception part right here. So here we are saying, hey, return the value of find grape, but with an increased index. So here we're going to say index plus one. Now that we have this, that means that it's going to start with zero, go inside with a zero. Then if it doesn't find it, then it's going to do zero plus one and then call the same function. So then it's going to come with a one. Similarly, if it doesn't find, then it's going to increase this by one again. So it's going to come with a two, with a three, with a four until it comes with seven when it finds this value and then returns a seven from there. But there's more to it. So let's try to first visualize this uh, on sort of a dashboard. So here on Miro, you can see that we have the find grip method. So what happens is that it's going to try to find this but will not and then we'll keep calling this function until this gets it. So let's say zero, one, two, and then we got three and we got seven. So here you can see that this is being called with different numbers. It's it's actually too small for us. So I'm gonna try to make it much, much better for you, much better. So it's gonna call this with index one, then it has the index two and we got seven. So this is the whole procedure that's gonna go. So it's gonna go from here to here, then from there, let me quickly draw this all. And the fun part begins when this function returns back the value seven from here. So the value that it returns back from here to here because this function was called by this function and not the outermost scope. Consider that we have the main scope going around somewhat like this. So if we have this thing as the main scope, all right, let's actually give this a background of uh, orange, move it back, maybe send to back. So let's say if this is the main scope and this is the inner scope, we have the main function calling find grape. The find grape calls find grape. The find grip calls find grip and these functions keep calling on top of each other and we finally have this instance which essentially returns the value back to its callee so it's important to understand that this function cannot return value directly back to main this will only return back to the function which called it so this function actually called this one so it's going to return back the value from here to here then this function is supposed to send back the value back and the value that we are going to return from this function find grape is the index and the index that we know already is seven. So what it's going to do is that it's going to return the value seven. So let's actually have that so we can see that. So here we have the value seven that is being returned. Similarly, we would be returning the same value from this function back to this function. And then let me draw the rest of it. All right, so now you get the idea. We call a function from a function and keep going until we find that condition from where we need to return the actual value that we desire. And when we get that, we return back all the way to the top function and this find grape will finally return this back to the top. So we got the seven finally returning to the main scope. Okay, so that's that's what we have. Now let's actually visualize that into the debugging mode into VS Code. So now that we have this function here, let's actually put some breakpoint and here debug this. You can see that we come to this line and then we go forward with just declaring this function and we start with the find grape zero. Now notice two things here. One is I'm going to use the value index here and then I also need to show you the call stack here. So notice this area and this area, two things. All right. So now if I go inside this function, then we have this. Now notice that the index at this point is zero. So it's trying to find the basket index, which means basket zero index and checking the fruit value, which is actually apple. So actually let's make this code a bit better. I'm going to take this in a variable const element equals this. And then I'm going to check the element in uh, element dot fruit that makes it much better. So run in debug, go here, go into the function. And here we have the element itself. So here we can also watch the element itself. 
you can see that the fruit here is apple the index here is zero so it's going to go forward and it's not going to go inside this condition why because this condition is false and then it will call the find grape method with an increased number so it's going to go to the else condition and here this find grape is calling find grape again but with a new value which is index plus one which is zero plus one one so it's going to go inside that function and now you see that the value for index is one and now the element is this apple because we have too many apples before we actually see a grape so we're going to continue doing this so it's not going to go here it's going to increase the value by one and the next time we go into function we'll have the value two one more thing that i told you to look at was this call stack notice that this main function called find grape with the index zero but then this find grape called this find grape with the index one and it's going to keep increasing this call stack now if i move forward you will see that there will be another instance of find grape here in the call stack so if I move forward, you see that now we have a third fine grape with a value of index set to two. Similarly, if I keep going forward, we will have a lot of fine grapes being created here because it's the call stack and that's how it works. So we are basically calling a function again and again from within the function itself, which creates a new scope of execution as well. So now we are going to go until we see a grape. Let's see, we go forward, six, seven. Now you can see that the fruit here is grape. So now that it is grape, you can see that this will go into this condition and will not call find grape anymore. So it's going to go inside and now it's returning the index seven from here. Now, as I told you in the mirror, we saw that this find grape seven with the index seven is only supposed to return this back to its previous position where the index was six. So it's returning it back to the previous find grape scope. So if I show you now, it's going to return it from here to its previous scope where the index was six. So as you can see, we came to this line, which is coming back to the previous find index where the index was six. So now you can see that we came to the previous one where the fruit was apple and the index was six. Now this one is supposed to return back to find grape scope where the index was five. Now, if we see, if we move forward from here, you will see that now it came back where the index was five. And this is exactly what's going to happen. So we are going to keep going up the stack from here to here, here to here, here to here, and then ultimately to this anonymous scope or to this top level scope where we get the value back to this variable and log it. So this find grape is going to go back where the index was four. And then if we go back, you see we removed one find grape from the call stack. Now we have four remaining because the index is three. So we go back from here. You can see now we have three items in the call stack. It goes back to the previous one where index was one, goes back to previous one where the index was zero, where this function was called. And now we evaluate this value and then return it back to the top scope. So here the evaluation was the index was seven. So the value here of find grape index plus one, if we want to look at it, we can actually copy this and then create a watch around it just like this. And you will know that the value here is seven. So seven is being passed from find grape back to previous find grape back to previous find grape. And now that we have this one, you will go forward and you can see that now the grape index that we have is seven. So we actually solve this using recursion boom one of the things that is a problem with recursion is you always have to see there is no condition or no situation where recursion completely keeps going on and on and on which could lead to an infinite loop for instance if we didn't have any grip in this data what would happen so i'm going to copy this replace this and now we're going to see what happens so here if i stop this then if i run and debug this you will see that it's going to go here but then it will keep going into the loop you can see the index is five now it will go forward the index is eight now which is fine it didn't find anything but when it comes forward to index 11 you can see that the element now is undefined why because we only have elements up to the index 10 because we have only 11 elements in this array now in this case we are trying to access this element dot fruit where the element is undefined. So this is going to crash the application and you can see the application ultimately crashed. So we don't actually want that situation. So what we could do here is that we could say if there's no element, then we return the value null. You could return minus one, you could return null, whatever you want, but we have to character this situation. So now that we have this one, let's run and debug. Then we're going to go ahead, move forward. It's going to continue up to the level 10. And then when it's 11, you see that it came back with the grape index set to null. Now this is not crashing and this is not running into an infinite loop. So you have to make sure what is your exit statement 
for our case the exit statement is this one this is just for the case where we don't have any data to show so this is an additional exit case but this is the primary exit case for us as soon as we find the grape we're gonna come out of it that's our exit condition so now that we have this one uh, i'm gonna try to put this back to where it belongs so it was 10 9 8 7 there we have it so i've put the code back and now we should be able to see the grape index as well so i'm gonna run and debug this one i'm gonna go forward remove the breakpoints from here go here go here the index is 7. So this is one way of working with recursion. Now I'm going to show you another example with recursion and that is the most famous one with recursion and that is factorial. So we have a file called calculate factorial in the code and this is how it looks like. So if you remember the, the logic for writing a factorial, it kind of looks something like this. So we have n factorial which equals to n into n minus 1 factorial. So this is how the factorial works, right? So the code here is exactly saying the same. We are saying, hey, calculate factorial with n, but with recursion, we are then saying return n into, which is exactly same as this one, then calculate factorial n minus 1. So we are saying the exact thing here. We are saying, hey, n factorial or calculate factorial equals to n into calculate factorial of n minus 1. So that's what we have written here. Now this also needs an exit statement so if we talk about this whole scenario the situation looks something like this let's say if we are to calculate the factorial of 5 that means n into n minus 1 factorial which means 5 into 4 factorial now this 4 factorial becomes 4 into 3 factorial this 3 factorial becomes 3 into 2 factorial this 2 factorial becomes 2 into 1 factorial similarly when we are going to return the value back we're going to return this one factorial, which is one back to this point. Then we're going to return this one into two back, which becomes two. Then this two into three becomes six. This six into four becomes 24 and 24 into five becomes 120, which is the factorial of five. So let's actually try this out with this code where we can actually see this working. So here I'm going to debug this. So I'm going to go to here and then run and debug. Actually first save this and then run and debug oh we have some error here so let's remove that run and debug and now you see that we came to this line we can do the same exact things here but i'm gonna use different variables and i'm also going to use n into calculate actually i'm gonna copy this i'm gonna just paste this here and i'm going to remove this expression from there we are passing 5 so it goes inside with a 5 now the n here is 5 so from the outermost scope we have called the calculate factorial with the value 5 so far so good so here we're checking hey is the n 1 if not then we need to calculate n into n minus 1 factorial so we are saying hey do you want to calculate 5 factorial all right let's calculate 5 into 4 factorial so here we are passing it n minus 1 to the same function calculate factorial here it goes inside so it calls the function with n minus 1 which is 4 and here now it will check hey is n 1 or n 0 no then we are going to call n into n minus 1 which is 4 into 3 factorial and you can see here that when n is 4 n into n minus 1 factorial becomes 24 so now we are calculating 4 into 3 factorial so we are gonna say 4 minus 1 we're gonna pass this inside as 3 and now this means 3 factorial which means 3 into 2 factorial so we go to the next line we say 3 into 2 factorial so we are gonna pass n minus 1 that is 2 from here so n becomes 2 we go inside and now that means 2 into 1 factorial so now we have n into n minus 1 factorial which is 1 factorial so we pass n minus 1 here to the next scope and you can see that these are piling up right now we are adding more call stacks so now the n is 1 we kind of complete this condition which is n equals to 1 and you see that we return 1 from here which means that this is the exit statement for us so now we're gonna go back to the whole chain of call stack so from here we return back 1 so you see that here we return the value 1 back to the previous instance where the n was 2 so we are saying hey this one is now going back and now we have n equals to 2 so we are returning this value just like this to 2 so it's gonna go back when the n was 3 we were calculating 3 into 2 factorial which equals to 6 so we are doing exactly this thing we are calculating 3 into 2 which equals to 6 then it goes back and returns 6 now we are talking about 6 into 4 so it's 4 into 3 factorial which means 24 so we do 6 into 4 and then we send it back the value 24 and finally when we have this value set to 5 we do 5 into 24 which evaluates to 120 and that's where it completes and the value becomes 120 
and when we send this back this goes back to the anonymous scope as you can see there's only one one further scope in the call stack so it goes from here to this line so if i go forward you see that it quickly comes out and the result value is 120 super cool right so this is how the factorial function works now you also learned how factorials work with recursion yay finally i want to show something cool with showing this factorial visually to you and this is something that i developed and if you're interested in learning you can let me know and i can teach maybe in the stream or maybe in a video how to visually show this factorial view on the ui for that what you would have to do is in the project root where you have cloned this project you can just run the value yarn start which means that you're going to be running that at the root of this project where we have package json so when you run this you should be able to go to localhost 8080 right here and then you should be able to click this js recursion when you do that you will see this whole ui and this is where the fun begins so if i had to calculate five factorial i could just type five here and then i could press this let's go button and see what happens it's going to do the exact same thing that we did in the function but in a visual way so for five factorial it calculates five into four four into three three into two two into one and then returns the value one two six and then 24 and then finally five into four which is 120 5 into 4 factorial which becomes 120 similarly you could check out other values like let's say 3 factorial so if i do that you will see the exact same thing but the visual effect of this going inside like from a function to function and then returning back those values is the fun part that i loved working with so you could also use further values like 6 factorial 10 factorial whatnot it will show you how the concept of going inside each time into a function recursively works and what point we return back the values and what are the values that we are returning back when it comes to factorial so that is pretty much it for this whole video and i absolutely hope that you like the video if you did press that thumbs up if you have not subscribed to the channel do it right now also do watch me on the streams i stream every wednesday and saturday on twitch and i would love to make these cool things based on your requests as well but also some things that i have in my mind so we build cool things with web technologies mean stack mernsec whatnot also if you want to support me uh, watching this content if you like what i'm doing consider supporting me on patreon you should be able to see the links here as well if you're interested in looking into what gear i use for streaming and for content creation you can also see that in the description as always happy coding and i'm going to see you next time